We are joined now by Colorado Secretary of State, the top elections official and involved in this in this case, Jenna Griswold. Um, thank you for coming on the beat tonight. Of course. Thanks for having me on, Ari. Your reaction to the Supreme Court taking this Colorado case tonight? I think it's a good thing for the United States Supreme Court to look at this case. Ultimately, the American people deserve to know whether someone who engages in insurrection can then serve in the highest position that we have in the United States. Yeah, and you, you've said some of that before. You've referred to the idea that he has engaged in insurrection. Um, and yet there's so many important due process questions here, no matter what one thinks about that particular candidate. And so just, just confirming up top, uh, Donald Trump hasn't been convicted of insurrection by a jury, right? That's right. And something that I, I disagree with you on uh, was your assertion that a criminal prosecution was necessary, because historically that is not how Section 3 of the 14th Amendment has worked. Hundreds of Confederate soldiers and officials were removed uh, from office after the Civil War under this procedure without a criminal prosecution. And Donald Trump has been afforded due process. He had a trial by a district court in Colorado. He then had a trial in front of the Colorado Supreme Court. And Ari, I think it's noteworthy that Trump did not show up. You would think that if you are your candidacy was being challenged in, in such a way that you would at least show up to defend yourself. But he decided not to. Of course, he had his lawyers there arguing on his behalf. But Donald Trump has been afforded due process, and there does not need to be a criminal prosecution for enforcement or disqualification under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. So let's explore several of those points. Um, the Civil War, of course, was the original impetus for this. Uh, folks who actually engaged in armed battle, war, and what many viewed as rebellion, um, is quite different from what he did that day, whatever one thinks of it. You acknowledge he wasn't convicted. He also hasn't been charged. We can put up on the screen, there is a federal insurrection statute. Um, when you go into court, that's one of the first things the judges ask about, as you know, this decision and the dissents reference it. Um, and Donald Trump, even by Jack Smith, wasn't charged with that. Um, so is this really a fair and good way forward if he hasn't even been charged, let alone convicted, of the very federal statute that is related to the insurrection that you say he committed? The United States Constitution does not say that someone is disqualified from further office if they are convicted for insurrection. It says very clearly, engage. Engage in insurrection or rebellion. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is the clear language of the United States Constitution. There have only been two courts in the United States to look at the question of whether he engaged in insurrection. And those two courts determined that he did. Ultimately, this is going to be one of the questions well, before the United States Supreme Court. I think we should be careful, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in and let you respond. I think we should be quite careful about that because, uh, again, what everyone thinks of Donald Trump and the public evidence, uh, he has not been charged with insurrection. He has not been convicted of insurrection in any criminal sense. So if judges in a different process announce their views, uh, that's, that's fine what their views are. But I don't think we should say here on, on TV or to the, to the public um, that he's been convicted of insurrection. He hasn't. That, those are their views about what they think happened. I did want to read for, for you from the dissents as well in the case and get your response to this. And we're, we're going to give you time here. But uh, as you know, some of these justices who dissented made the very arguments that are going to ricochet probably in the Supreme Court. Uh, reading from some of the key points, um, they state that the ballot law was not enacted in Colorado to decide if a candidate engaged in insurrection. That the hearing that disqualified Trump was actually this low sort of 51 percent evidence standard, which is not the way to adjudicate something of this magnitude. Uh, as for due process, uh, one of the judges argued that it was really makeshift proceedings that didn't have discovery, subpoenas, witnesses, or a fair trial. And thus, it was really masquerading as a run-of-the-mill state election code claim. Um, what do you say to those concerns from those judges, um, that this is too important and I think, if I can guess, you and I and many of our viewers agree this is important. Um, but it's precisely because it's too important uh, to adjudicate in a real criminal trial what happened with January 6th um, to just have some judges kind of make it up over a couple weeks in a proceeding 
um, that doesn't have basic rules of evidence. Well, I have to strongly push back on you. I think the judges in Colorado are serious judges that follow the law, procedures, and rules of evidence. So I do believe that they gave Donald Trump a fair trial, and it's on him if he decided not to show up. Uh, and I'll push back one other time and, and say again, historically, a conviction was not needed. Um, whether the United States Supreme Court decides for, to go civil, in a, a different way I'll let on you that, finish, but for civil war, for civil war combatants. Well, this uh, procedure of disqualification was not only used during uh, or during uh, uh, post con construction during uh, right after the Civil War. It's been used various other times. Uh, but you're right; it's not a provision that is normally used because we usually do not have folks try to engage in insurrection and run for office. But to answer your, your uh, initial question, do I agree with the dissent? Uh, no, I do not. Uh, in Colorado, we periodically look and disqualify candidates for not being eligible. Uh, if a candidate isn't a natural-born citizen, they have been disqualified from the Colorado ballot various times. Uh, if candidates don't uh, are not qualified under state or federal law, we do not put them on the ballot. Uh, but ultimately, these questions will go before the United States Supreme Court. I do think the Colorado Supreme Court got it right. Uh, and this is a big precedent for the country. So just like you, we'll wait and see what the United States Supreme Court says. Absolutely. And I think it's great to kind of talk it out and learn what your perspective is on that. You're certainly very knowledgeable. Uh, with regard to the best way to do this, if that were the outcome, what you say you think would be better, what's to stop judges in Texas from holding a proceeding over a couple weeks and determining that, that other people engaged in what they call insurrection through their judicial process, uh, without hearing witnesses, without having a criminal standard of evidence, without allowing subpoenas to get the other side. Um, what's to stop this, which even if people view it as a potentially well-meaning effort, um, from creating another round of legalized sort of chaos in our elections? Um, and I'll give you a couple of a bullet points on that and let you respond, because you can imagine these criticisms coming up in another area. Again, the chief justice in his in the dissent here says the Colorado ballot law mandates two deadlines in this case. Neither were honored. The court suspended proceedings for two weeks, and the majority argues that the lower court just substantially complied, which, if true, he says, basically renders the statute's five-day and 48-hour requirements meaningless. Uh, and going on to say something that I think we have to take seriously, quite honestly, as a society of, with the rule of law, uh, the next quote I'm going to read says, even if we're convinced a candidate committed horrible acts, quote, there must be due process before we can declare that individual disqualified from holding public office. Um, and on a matter as weighty as insurrection, um, and this is a field that I've studied and I want to be very clear about it, it did not look like fair due process to this candidate. Uh, and if we're going to be fair, it doesn't matter how people feel otherwise about the candidate. So what do you say to both those quotes and the concern that this could run amok on both sides endlessly if this decision were to hold? Well, I think we're going to have to dis disagree on the due process issue. Uh, under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, these are civil trials. Donald Trump was afforded due process, uh, and if the United States Supreme Court disagrees, that they can say so. Uh, I do think we have to be very careful in saying a judicial process was not fair. The Colorado courts acted fairly. There were witnesses. There was a standard of, of evidence and procedure, uh, and Donald Trump had due process. Now, we can disagree with that, you but it, say it's not had, some... You wouldn't say he had the due process of, a, of, like, a criminal defendant, would you? No, because it's not a criminal case. There's different standards for a, a criminal case than a civil case. Um, but I do think it's really dangerous to say that the courts in Colorado did not do a, a, an efficient job that respects the law and due process rights. And I, I highly disagree with you saying that this sets a, a downward spiral precedent. Uh, if a, a candidate or someone wanting to run for office again engages in insurrection, 
we need a, a court to uh, adjudicate those questions uh, and do it looking at evidence, looking at witness, having a standard of procedure, just like what happened in Colorado. So I don't think that uh, this case should not be adjudicated. Donald Trump is a danger to this country. I believe that. He is a danger to the right to vote. There is clear language in the United States Constitution about the acts that I believe he engaged in and two Colorado courts do also. Now, there can be disagreement, but if there is disagreement, we follow a judicial process. That is exactly what's happening here. And ultimately, my job is to follow the law, uphold the Constitution, and listen to uh, uh, the highest court and, and what they say. And I, of course, as Colorado Secretary of State, will follow whatever the, the United States Supreme Court issues in this case.